What's up guys, Larry Chen here. We are in Louisiana at New Orleans Motorsport Park, also known as NOLA. And uh, this is Grid Life Bayou Bash. And as always with Grid Life, I like to make my rounds, walk around the pit, check out some of the local cars as well as the race cars. Today we have a really, really clean MR2 build. Um, the owner here is Scott. Hi, Scott. Hey, how's it going? Uh, but the story is I landed in uh, MSY, right? The New Orleans International Airport. Okay. I landed and I kind of put it out there on social. I'm like, hey, I'm not from this area. Uh, if any of you guys who follow me have any suggestions on cars I need to feature, definitely let me know so I can kind of, I guess, feature some local flavor. Um, out of all the people that messaged me, I must have got, I'd say, 50 DMs. Jeez. Okay? <laughs> wow. Maybe more. Wow. I, I think 25 of them were for your car. Wow. So you either tricked me by asking all of your friends to DM me or this car is really that cool. I have a feeling that this car is actually that cool and it has that good of a story. Maybe a little bit of both and yeah, it definitely does have a story behind it. It's 10 years of ownership and um, I mean, it's been wrecked, it's been crushed, it's uh, been painted by a few different people. Uh, three, three motors, four transmissions. I mean, anything you can think with the MR2 has been done. Every small detail has been touched. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, what, what you see is what you get with this car. Yeah, this, uh, this honestly is my favorite generation of MR2. While the uh, AW11 always has um, a special place in my heart because, I don't know, that's just like the classic boxy right. look one, you know? And, an MRS, while it's cool, it just doesn't have a turbo. Yeah, and it needs a lot of work to make it cool, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this one, is this a factory turbo? This was a factory NA, and uh, this is now the Gen 4 Caldina swap. So it um, has about 300 horsepower, and it's a daily driven car, so it has AC, every, every necessity I need. So did you do the swap yourself? Yes, everything. Everything but paint work I did myself. Okay. Oh, yeah. T tucked the wiring harness. It's supposed to be a huge harness here. I tucked it all in the trunk. Um, a few small things. Like I said, I'd, it's kind of messy over there for the AC, but it works. I got AC in Louisiana, so that's the main thing. Oh, that's really big. So th I feel like you need AC more in Louisiana than California even. Yes. Because at least we can roll down the windows. If you roll down the windows, <laughs> you'll you just get really sticky. And I, used to, I used to wear glasses, and your glass would instantly fog up. It's, yeah. yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Um, so... What is this out of originally? This is out of a Toyota Caldina. It's a minivan that they got overseas. We never got, never got a stateside. And um, a lot of guys, after they figured out that the motor mounts are the same, you just got to change a few things with the wiring harness and it bolts right up. And it's a um, new, uh, newer technology like coil on plug, cam sensor, crank sensor, and the better turbo built wheel. And it's built into the manifold, so it spools faster. And uh, this is a minivan motor. Yes. OK, but. <laughs> So what is the actual technical uh, name for this motor? 3S GTE. Oh, it is. So it is still a 3S GTE. Yeah, yeah. But it's just a newer. It's like LS Motors. It's the newest one available oh, on the market. Oh, OK. All right. So let's say if they continue to come out with cars in the US with their 3S GTE, but potentially it could be something like exactly. this. Exactly. That's exactly what they would do. Let's put this motor in it. Oh, OK. So what year did this motor actually? 2002. This is 2002 motor. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Got it. All right. I'm, I'm a dummy. See, I don't know that stuff. But um, so you, you got it. It was imported from Japan, obviously, and you swapped it in. Yes. And it's completely 100% road street legal here in Louisiana. The daily because, driven. Every because uh, pretty much anything goes here, apparently, right? Yes. <laughs> New Orleans is definitely a special place. Yeah. So tell me, I think you said it got wrecked even too, right? Yes. So uh, I was driving in Tampa one night. I just moved out here from Tampa and um, just driving home. Some guy just swerved into me, crushed this whole side, and this, this door wouldn't even open. It was so bad. Um, insurance worked with me, and I luckily have a good friend named Falcon, and uh, he's from a different country. And over here in America, we're just so used to replacing things because we can get anything we need. But over there, they're used to working with their hands and working with what they got. And he actually didn't replace this quarter panel. He pulled it all out. and. Uh, 
Blend everything in. Like I said, it's all. Wow. The, this this the door paint, closes better. The paint. I think this is probably the best paint I've ever seen. Thank you. Thank on, you very uh, much. SW20 MR2 because so my brother-in-law actually has a red one, and it was an NA one, and he swapped it also, but his single stage paint. You know, it's red. Pink now. <laughs> yeah, now pink. Um, it, he had a, a paint correction recently, and then on the rags, they basically turn red from taking wow. all the paint off, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then there are parts of the car that you could see the primer underneath it. Um, yeah. But this looks great. I absolutely love this body style. So like, it, was this added or is yeah, this so a this, turbo this, part? This, no, this whole piece is an aftermarket uh, side skirt, but it's blended in as you can see right there by the fender. And uh, I took the door trim that people get usually chrome from AutoZone. I put black around here just to complete it, smooth everything out, just kind of like make it more modern. Uh huh. So who makes that? This is a Gretty side skirt. Oh, it's Gretty. Okay, very cool. Um, and usually, usually there's a hard line right here that stops it. But right. But I like the OEM plus kind of look. That's yeah. No, it definitely has an OEM. And honestly, thank you for not making it like super. Uh, unmanageable in terms of like being able to drive on the street like this yeah. I mean I know these are pretty rare what are these these are Desmond Y sports they make the Regimasters but these are their three-piece wheel that's a little bit uh, more rare and these are original yes original patina finish yeah these look great I love them I absolutely love them. Uh, they definitely fit the car, that five-spoke design, I agree. So, but you could actually probably get this refinished. That's, that's actually the plan. I'm uh, not especially mad now, but I was planning to get these probably black or uh, gunmetal gray and then gold hardware to go with the... Yeah, they look great. But that white on white is nice. I like that. So what other body modifications have you done? Uh, this 93 lip. This is uh, off of the newer MR2s, the MRS badge. I feel, <laughs> like, I feel like it's kind of classy. It's, uh, I love that. So then... Um, the original has like a kind of like an eagle looking thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And this, then this is more like it a, didn't have one right. for this. Correct. And then so then you took the newer. So is this a, a, a Japan thing? Yeah. Midship run, runabout? That's what the MR stands for in MR2. Oh. They never told us, but they put the badge out. I so. never even knew that. You learn something new every day. I like that. OK. Got the clear corners, the, uh, like I said, 94 lip little size uh, splitter add-ons. And this was originally a 93 car, so this is a 94 wing, and I shaved the uh, antenna hole. Oh, yeah. Where does the antenna hole usually yeah, go? Yeah, it's like right here. Okay, got it. Yeah. I like this, too, little gurney flap thing. It's for an FRS. Yeah. Oh, it is? Okay. <laughs> Made a fit. I like that. And then those are uh, the 94 taillights with the shaved lock cylinder and uh, a departure exhaust. I like your um, license plate, too. <laughs> MR. Hey, it's fitting, slow. man. It's definitely fitting. Huh. For your, for your driving pleasure, Mississippi. I like that. Huh. You know, that's kind of one of my favorite things about these when they're really modified is the way the exhaust sits. So this is, this is the exhaust for the MR2. This is called the Phoenix Power Departure. They make these rear spats I have. Uh, it's, a, it's a very local tuning company for the MR2s. And um, like I said, this is the exhaust. This is... Well, so where are they based out of? Japan. Oh, okay. Japan. Japan only. And they had a small limited run of these exhausts. So if you go to Google right now, you type MR2 departure, the only one for sale is like five grand. Right. Wow. I got for a case of beer and just living in Tampa, you know, just having the car so long, you just find good deals like that. <laughs> the guy didn't know what he had. So I said, I'm, I'm going to take it. <laughs> he actually didn't know what he had. Yeah, he did not. Right. We Versus some people saying, I know what I have. <laughs> I'm going to sell you these exhausts for $10,000. And uh, this guy didn't even know what he had. You, you came up with a steal. So essentially, just from that, you probably doubled the value of this car, huh? <laughs> to, to, the right, uh, to the right person, yeah. The guy that uh, was actually selling this exhaust or gave it, gave it away um, is a collector. He collects the 94 and 95s, which are the last year. And so he gets modified ones. He don't want the junk. So, hey, I'll take it. You know, I'll gladly take it. All right, so you kind of come off as a person who, um, I'm, I'm there's, there's a couple things I want to talk to you about, but you kind of come off as a person where I feel like you love this car so much, you will do anything in your power to keep this car. Yeah, I had it for 10 years, man. Anything anything I can do. So is this a lifer car for you? Because I have a couple lifer cars. Yeah, this is definitely. I, I feel like I would never sell and hopefully I can pass on to my kids. Right. You have to pry this out of my cold, dead hands for sure. This I, I love that so much because now, especially, you know, with how easy it is 
bring a trailer, um, eBay, Craigslist, Facebook right. Marketplace. It's super easy just to go through your cars. Like, I understand that, but I feel like for somebody like me who's such a lover of cars, I feel like I fall in love with them too easily. Yeah. With that said, that's why once this got wrecked, you figured it's better to just rebuild it and kind of make it even better. Especially because uh, when this car got wrecked, I only had 8,000 miles since, it pretty much looked as it does now, uh, 8,000 miles since the, re, uh, since the rebuild. And so you know, the car was just done and it just got wrecked. So I was just so heartbroken, I had to bring it back. You know, I didn't have time to enjoy it. And so tell me, how did you get into this kind of tuning culture too? Like Tampa, I don't know. I mean, I, I understand that there's a big JDM scene now, right? but just a couple of years ago, like where did you even find all of this stuff? Um, recently through the Facebook groups, honestly. Facebook groups have been, uh, you know, the new forums, I guess. And so just hopping on there and just seeing what people have. And when you post a car like this, a lot of people never even seen this car, so they all want to check it out, see what it is in person. So do you, people think it's a Ferrari or yeah. something? Like they, a white Ferrari? Yeah, they say a Ferrari, Lambo, uh, Miata, I mean, any, any RX-7, I mean, anything with pop-up headlights, because they've never seen this car before. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I can imagine. See, these are a little more common in Los Angeles, um, but um, I'm sure if you're driving around, uh, like, French Quarter, downtown New Orleans, like, you know, I'm sure you get a lot of interesting looks. For sure. Let's check out the interior. It looks um, like a brand new car in here. Yeah, that's uh, help with some arm roll and uh, just this double din really kind of brings everything together. Uh, so I have the Cusco roll cage with the harness bar welded in. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with local talent, New Orleans currency, signed it. Uh, Xavier Wolf, part of Haw Squad, he checked the car out, he liked it. Xavier Wolf, really? Yeah, yeah. We saw him actually at uh, Grid life recently, oh, wow. or not not recently, but last year, yeah. um, he he uh, did a set and it was uh, really cool to kind of see. He came for a show for New Orleans, and uh, when I pulled up, he was he was a stat. He's like, man, what is this? He's a big car guy, then, definitely, huh? Definitely. Yeah, cool guy to meet. Yeah, I like that. Um, HKS turbo timer. This is where the clock normally goes. Yes. Okay. So the clock goes. I uh, painted all the needles green with a uh, fingernail polish. Put the, <laughs> put the boost gauge in the middle. Um, Got these chrome rings from Poland. That they don't sell those at Income Factory. Huh. Put, put LEDs in the gauges. Oh, I like that a lot. Hold on. That's cool that it changes. Okay. That switches. Huh. Wait, I got to show this. Like, the detail of this is really nice that it, 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 like, changes. Huh. It's the little things that really kind of make it, huh? Same thing with the... Uh... You know, the green personal horn button, all that stuff. Um, green stitching with the TRD. This ring right out here is out of an Audi. Uh, just to more oh. modernize it. It's supposed to be a yeah, square. Yeah, this is like a TT thing? Yep. Yeah. It's supposed to be a square, but. Uh, huh. I love like all these little things that you've done. I guess that's kind of the fun part of it, huh? I'm just trying to stand out, you know? Yeah. It's funny because a lot of people want to stay, or like, it was never green. It never, was... never green. It was uh, just None red. Okay. So I had to take it and uh, scrape all the, the red paint off with a razor blade and then found some fingernail polish that was close enough and <laughs> try my best. And that requires taking everything apart, so that was the pain. So too. that's why you kind of went with the green theme right. because of the, to match the kit. It all started with the, uh, with the powder coat um, on the valve cover. Oh, okay. And then yeah, right. fell into the roll cage and I was like, that's not enough. So then I need the seat and then I need yeah. the doors. Yeah, and... even the, the Takata. Or this is a Cobra. Yeah, it's a Cobra, but Takata Tico and Cobra. Oh, okay. So you made this yourself, custom? No, no, no. They, they, they sell it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they did a, like a partnership yeah, together? Yeah. Oh. A small limited run. I like that. That's cool. And so like all real parts? All real parts. Um, small things. These are Scion TC sun visors because they're a little bit larger. The mirrors actually work. Has extended, you know, comes out. Um, LEDs and the dome lights. This was originally gray, rewrapped it black myself. Huh. There's just so many little things. Small things. I mean, this is your hobby. The door cards, all that. Yeah. Even these lights, too. What other things, um, I mean, like, what else would you build after this? Honestly, man, I, I don't know. This is, this is it's mid-engine. So, you know, it's mid-engine, it's turbo, has the uh, T-tops, has the pop-up headlights. So what, what else do you need, you know? Yeah. Well, the reason why I love pop-up headlights is because you can actually change the look of the car yeah. with a push of a button, Right. you know? And I don't know how it is on this. I've never owned one of these. Like I said, my brother-in-law has one, but uh, can you 
pop it up without turning on the headlights too? Yeah, you just flash yeah. the flash the brights. No, but like, oh, yeah, um, yeah. there's a way to. Yeah, that's. So I had an S13 that did the same thing, and the only reason it's just cool to be able to change the look of the car, right. like I said, from the outside, the appearance of it. I, I think that's super cool. Do I want to park it with the lights on or? Uh, yeah. yeah. So what is, uh, what, what kind of headlights are those? Those are LEDs, huh? Yeah, they, these are They're LEDs. super bright. Oh, wow. Got the, uh, that looks great. DRLs and this is the brights. What do you think, Tyler? Do you like it? This car is beautiful. It's beautiful, huh? I need pop-ups in my life. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, I think, um, my God. I love it. And the wheels, are they're so perfect for this car. Definitely period correct. My, my friends always joke about like, this is a car that you would find covered in dust in the back of like a Japanese warehouse or something like that. I mean, that's, yeah, I, like I mean, cause you're not even running spacers or anything. No, no, huh? this is 17 by nine, 17 by eight. So staggered. Gorgeous. I absolutely love this thing. All right, so um, can you turn it on and so we can hear it? Um, can we take it for a drive too? Yes, sir. You can drive it if you want. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, you know I'm gonna drive it. So I'll tell you what. Um, you can let it warm up too a little bit. Uh, after my brother-in-law did the swap, he let me drive his car. And you know, there's so much about it, the essence of it that I absolutely loved. My favorite thing, of course, is the fact that the turbo is right next to your head yes. in a way, right? And on top of that, I don't know, it kind of felt like driving an NSX, but a turbo version of it. I don't know if that's complimentary to the MR2 or if that's, you know, making fun of the NSX, but <laughs> honestly, it just kind of has that essence and I, and I love both cars so much. And it's a lot shorter than the NSX, not as long as the school bus, you know, so. <laughs> but, uh, and also like how the dash is geared towards the driver's at 90s, you know, the whole thing they were doing in the 90s, you know, being driver focused cars. Yeah, that's pretty much most, I feel like, of the 90s JDM cars, you know, especially the Supra, Mark IV Supra, and uh, the Z32 kind of had that um, fighter cockpit, right. fighter jet cockpit. And going to the Supra, the reason you don't see it to me, because I mean, on the dealership floor back in 93, you know, the Supra just came out and this was to the side. Where are you going to pick a brand new Supra or are you going to pick, you know, Camry, a mid-engine Camry as this was marketed? So, yeah, so that's why I was overshadowed, but it worked out in my favor. So a little bit, a lot cheaper than a Supra, you know? <laughs> Well, I mean, these, honestly, I think these They're are going, going up. up. These yeah, are going up in price. Especially too. with the K-Swap, all that. Yeah. And I mean, I don't even know how many right-hand drive versions that they made in Japan. Like I... They kept going to 98, I believe. Uh-huh. Okay. In Japan? Yes. Okay. Huh. That's interesting to, to, to think about because, for example, like the Z cars, you know, in the U.S., there's way more Z cars in the U.S. than in Japan even though it was made in Japan, or, or at least it started in Japan, right? right. Or it's a Japanese car. Um, but the market for something like that is so much bigger here. I mean, because you just have a lot more um, opportunity to enjoy a car like that, I feel like, in the US. For sure, for sure. But with this, it's just so cool that it's of era. Like, I feel like this should have came from the factory. Right. Like, that looks so cool. In fact, I see so many people put those scoops up here. I think it looks terrible. It kind of uh, looks like it has a mohawk. And the, the, the argument online is that it doesn't work with the airflow. So the, this MR2 is designed, the air goes in here or it comes underneath the car and it exits out the engine bay out the top. Yeah, so why would you want to yeah, force air? Exactly, exactly. I see, okay. Let's uh, give it a couple revs, I want to hear it. That's spicy. That's pretty good. I like that. That's no blow off valve. That's all flutter. I like that. I, I, I really, really like that. All right. I'm going to drive it. You're driving it? Yeah, I'm going to drive it. Sick, bro. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty low. It engages low. You're right. So one of the big things about this that I really absolutely love, no power steering, right? No, this has power steering. Oh, this has power steering? It's electro, oh. so it doesn't... Uh... It comes on and off a little bit. Wait, so you put it on electric? No, this is, comes electric. It's actually, oh. um, it's really, really wanted in the um, like drift community. They take these pumps, they're rising in price because everybody takes the pumps out really? and use them for uh, different weird cars. Huh. Oh, I, okay, so 
then it's funny because my brother-in-law took his power steering out so that's probably why i think they don't have power steering but for sure like i think or the the aw11 doesn't right right oh yeah i like that do you let other people drive your car sometimes i feel like uh you know you, you've driven quite a few better cars than this so what kind of clutch is it uh it's like zeti stage one. Oh, okay and it's all um, brand new master cylinder, slave cylinder, all that good stuff. Oh, and what kind of suspension is it? Uh, this is Team Flex uh, Z's, our team. Oh. It, it is definitely, it's addicting. It's that sounds... <laughs> That's, I guess that's the cool thing about having a MR, right? Right. It's just right there, right in your ear. I absolutely love it. What? It just like dumps that air, like, oh my God. That sounds so good. Everybody's like, man, why is your car not faster? I said, dude, this is all you need to get around. This is it. Yeah, no, I love this. <laughs> I, I, I know you can make big power from these, but it's almost like it could be a little too much, yes. you know, especially um, just being mid-engine. And then you lose the, uh, the cornering ability of it. I love, I like back roads. Oh my God, that's great. <laughs> that sound, can I roll up the windows? That sound is so badass. There's something about this, that sound. Wow. That's all you need. That's it, that's it. That's it, I mean. It's a cool little daily for sure. I'm sure you're just listening to that thing all the time. <laughs> I, I spent all this money on the radio, but. <laughs> Who needs it? Who needs a radio? I can't believe how well, I mean, it's just so defined. I mean, just because it's right here, I guess. Yes. So, and this this motor is mostly stock then? It's 100% stock. All I did was change the piping. So it's a, uh, it's factories, it gets an O, I up the boost to 17 PSI, which is safe. I mean, so technically it's super reliable. I've, I've driven this car to Arizona and back a few times. I actually drove it from Florida. And this car is not a trailer queen or show cars. Right. It's Even though it looks the part. Thank you. Thank you. Huh. <laughs> that sound is so good. How could you not like this? <laughs> I mean, this is this is literally. This is like the essence of having a turbo car. Yes. It's it's crazy because. I always kind of bring this up. Um, sound is such a byproduct, and honestly, it doesn't make you go faster or anything. But we as humans, you know, enjoy sound so much. Like, why would you even need to listen to music? Why not just not listen to music at all, you know? <laughs> but we enjoy it so much, and, and that's kind of the thing is, is uh, holy crap, it sounds really good. <laughs> take, take this left here and uh, just get that good second and third gear pull. All right. So that AC is ice cold, you know, if you want that. Yeah. Um, and I have full sound system in here, everything works. Does, is the AC R134 then? Yes, this, this is the new AC. It's not a R12, right? R12 okay. is old stuff, I yeah, believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think in 94 they changed the condenser. So I had to get a whole new condenser and everything and get the whole lines changed, all that. Because I want this car to be as, you know, dailyable as possible. I don't want to. Okay, so then in terms of ECU, Factory. Factory. Automatic ECU. Factory, the US factory? No, Japanese automatic factory ECU. And then it doesn't hang up or anything? No. Like You just override it and make the car think you're in neutral all the time? And, uh... Oh, that's how you get around <laughs> it. That's how you get around it. Because otherwise it would just kind of hang there, right? right. <laughs> oh my god that is unbelievable it just sounds so good it is 
really, really good. I cannot praise this enough. I mean, and I'll be honest, I kind of knew what I was getting myself into, you know, driving this car because I've driven them before. But this one, I've never driven one with that with the uh, the Japanese motor, the updated Japanese motor. And it fits so smooth, right? It yeah. doesn't doesn't hiccup, doesn't hang, it doesn't. Uh... And and it's comfortable. Like these seats are comfortable. Um, Not a, not a bad car, you know. I could have paid a car note for the last ten years and drove something basic, but yeah, with the looks every, this car gets, and you know, just a yeah, that's really the thing. Yeah, I mean, so are you into all sorts of different cars? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm uh, I'm well cultured. <laughs> Anything but Hondas. The front <laughs> the, the front wheel drive ones, at least. I mean, there's some fast Hondas. Oh yeah, don't yeah, get me wrong. They'll, they'll walk me all day. You can't discount the fast ones. All the way, six, 65, damn. <laughs> it's just, I, everyone's always complains like, oh man, you, you pussyfooted so much in other people's cars. I'm like, I literally just do not want to break other people's cars. I respect them, you know, and I love them. So I don't want to like break yeah. anything, yeah. But uh, these Gen 4s can handle a lot of abuse if you just keep the boost off of them. So. Right. So where do you where do you typically shift at? Uh, about five, five or four oh, okay. k. But um, red line sixty five. Okay, got it. Like right now, it sounds like a J. You can just hear that turbo just spinning yeah, right behind yeah. you. You could just hear it. I like it. I mean, that's kind of the crazy thing about this motor, right? It's inline four, but you hear so much more turbo than anything else that you can't really even tell. Right there, right there, right there. Wow. Holy. Dude, Scott, thank you so much for bringing it out. Thank you, man. Um, so we're gonna have a cruise tonight. Hopefully you can cruise with us a little bit with some of the drift cars. You know, you'll fit right in. It's turbo, it's uh, JDM, and um, it looks great. Yeah, thank you.